Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is a five under five DIY challenge and I have five beautiful French country farmhouse inspired thrift flips for you guys. You guys are going to love these. I had so much fun creating them and they all turned out so beautifully. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I love looking through the seasonal sections at the thrift stores and finding all the fun finds. This little tin spoke to me and I thought it was so cute. However, I wanted to kind of leave. I like the season's greeting on the other side and I may do something with it for Christmas, but I kind of liked the back side. I actually liked that seam coming through and I have this little stencil from Dollar Tree that I thought would be so cute on here. So I am just wiping this up. Now this was not actual rust. I think it was painted to look rusty like this. Uh, so it wiped up really well and I just taped down this stencil so I didn't have to hold it with my fingers that way I could sit here and do everything I needed to to get this stencil transferred on here but not have the stencil slipping from side to side or anything so I just put a couple little pieces of painters tape on there now I'm just using a stencil brush from Dollar Tree I'm just pouncing up and down in a motion I do a little bit of swirling somebody mentioned to me that that works pretty well so I just you just want to make sure that you don't have a ton of paint on your brush because that's when you start to have that seepage that comes with going underneath the stencil and, and creating all that mess that you really don't want there so you can kind of just see I'm going like around in a little bit of a circle or a pouncing motion either way just making sure that all of those areas get covered now when I'm doing this I do let it completely dry and I do a second coat because I wanted that to be a little bit thicker on here I think it transfers really nice though you can see when I take this off I think it looks really good I'm just trying to make sure that there's no places that I want to go back because once you um, take that off it's really hard to match everything up but if you bend it down and there's a spot you maybe didn't get as well you can kind of place it back over and touch it up there was a little spot on the edge you could see that I needed to wipe with just like a wet paper towel or a baby wipe to get off that I kind of had gone over on the side of the stencil. That cleaned up really, really easy. Now I'm just taking my emery board. I love using fingernail files for distressing and sanding because I love how easily you can handle them and they get into the little small areas. Now I do want to just let you know that obviously if you want to leave the stencil just find how it was in the beginning. It looked beautiful that way. I love pieces when I'm making them to look like they have a history. They've got a good story to tell. Uh, there's something that's been around for a little while. So that is part of why I love distressing pieces. That it, I know it's a matter of personal preference. I feel like I probably am a broken record saying that over and over. But every time I distress anything, I will have somebody comment on, oh, you ruined it. it that's fine if you think that. I mean, that's up to you what you do with your distressing on there and, and whatnot. So now I'm just taking a little bit of green paint here. Um, this is um, like a eucalyptus color, I believe is what it is. And I'm just smearing a teeny, teeny bit. I wanted it to look like it had a patina, like it's been aged, has that history, has a long story that it's just been left out somewhere and I just go wherever I feel just so lightly and then on the edges when I do it here like I do it on the little um, wires that go up over to here you can see on the edge there just to make sure or just to make it look like it's been sitting out for years and years and I'll even rub some on the sides here and when I do that you can see I dab it down on the paper towel and I'm just using my finger here and when I dab it on the sides I will just kind of rub it in almost I mean you barely can see this but it's just enough to make it look like it's like actually aged like this so I think it turns out really really good completely optional but I just really love how that ends up looking with that green touch on there now of course we just need some flowers I'm just digging into my stash for these I have just so many different florals sitting around so whatever you would want to put in here you could definitely change it out for the seasons remember that on the back side of this I've got that Christmas one I can flip it over for Christmas time and have a cute Christmas one and I don't know maybe I'll redo that in one of my videos closer to Christmas that I will um, update that side of it because I feel like it did maybe need a little something extra but look at how beautiful this turns out I think this is amazing I love the colors of it I love the drooping flowers with that design on there I just think it looks so vintage and farmhouse something that you would just definitely find in the French countryside do you guys like this piece 
It is five under five. You guys, today's video is the five under five DIY challenge. This month's theme is thrift flips. I'm so excited to get to show you the rest of my thrift flips. I host this challenge every month with my good friend, Missy. We have a different theme every month and all of the creators that participate are supposed to do five DIYs in that theme that cost $5 or less for each DIY. This month, our guest host is Erin Glenn with Aimless Squirrel. I'm gonna leave a link to her channel down in the description box as well as Missy's channel. So stop by and say hello to those beauties and make sure you subscribe to their channels while you're there. If you want to see everybody's videos, there's going to be a link that is in my description box. I will also pin it in my comments so it's easy to find. So you'll be able to click right over to that playlist and you will be able to see everybody else's thrift flips that they did. They each have five. They each cost less than $5. It is a win-win situation. So definitely go check those out. Let's get right back into the DIYs. I picked up this little picture at the thrift store because I actually really like the frame of it. And when I got it, I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. And it ends up being kind of a detailed project, a lot of little components that go into it, but I love how it turns out in the end. Now the backing of it just had that paper on there and it was glued on so well. And <laughs> these little staples are so hard to get out here. It reminds me of when you're deconstructing a canvas. So I just remove all of those to get to the frame. And I'm just using some form foam core board. Gosh, that was hard for me to say. Some foam core board, but you could easily use like some cardboard, uh, even like the uh, paper, like the actual picture, the matting that came in, it would work. Just anything for a sturdy background there. And I'm taking just some scrapbook paper that looks like some wood slats here. I thought that that would be really cute to use. Now I'm just taking some white wax. So the white wax is going to brighten up this frame and I'm just going through, this frame has a lot of texture and a lot of grooves. That's why I thought it would be perfect to use this on. So I'm giving it a very good coat. Now this stuff goes on quite thick. It's a little bit different uh, consistency than paint is. And so you're going to be able to kind of wipe it off. So once I get it covered on there and let it dry a little bit, I'm just taking my baby wipe and I'm just wiping around all of the edges where all those ridges and the texture is to kind of have that show through. I thought that that would be such a fun aged look, just a different distressing technique. And you can see how cute it's going to look with the contrast with that paper, that board that we have. Now I got a new glue gun, you guys. I'm loving this. This is a cordless glue gun and I've had that glue gun I've used in my other DIYs for years and years. So I'm so excited to use this, but I'm just hot gluing this piece in here and I think it looks really good so far. Now these windows came from Dollar Tree. They have a couple different types. If you have a chance to pick up the flat ones that are not these plastic three-dimensional ones, I think this would go a lot quicker or else use some spray paint. For whatever reason, I just decided to hand paint this and it did take a little bit of time just because of all those little nooks and crannies that you have to get paint into. But I'm just covering it with some white paint. Now maybe you could even find these in a white color. Whenever I find them at Dollar Tree, they're in always like these really like almost like a lavender color or that yellow color. So after I paint that, I just take a wooden tag and pick these up at Dollar Tree. You can buy them unfinished in bundles on Amazon. And I paint mine black to look like a chalkboard. And now I'm just going to distress all of the edges to it. So I'm just sanding all around really good to have it look. You can see there what it ends up looking like. Now this part is up to you what you decide to do, what you put on your little tag here. I have this little word hello on a chalk couture stencil here that I'm going to use you'll see what ends up happening. It doesn't end up turning out the greatest, but I think it ends up uh, like a happy accident. But I'm just using my chalk couture uh, chalk paste here to go over this stencil. You could use your Cricut, you could handwrite something, uh, you could print something on some tissue paper and decoupage it on there. But look at when I pull this back, you can kind of see it looks like it didn't really transfer the best, but I thought, hey, I'm really going for that distressed look. So let me just kind of touch it up a teeny bit. So that way you can at least see all of the letters. And I kind of embraced that rustic look that it came with it and decided I would just go with it. And so I ended up really liking it. But again, it was just a happy accident. So now I'm just going to take my window and line it up on my frame here. And you can kind of see how I'm going to put this together. I'm just using my hot glue to glue this on. You could use something a little bit extra if you wanted to. I felt like hot glue is going to be just fine for this project. Just wherever I could get a little extra glue onto there. And then I'm just going to line that up. I just eyeball everything when I line it up. So if you need a measure, definitely do that. Now I had tied this rope onto 
the tag there and I liked having it look like there was rope tied onto it but I didn't like the tails hanging off of there so I decided to glue those down on the back and I'm just taking a little sprig of some boxwood here this just comes from Walmart I love their boxwood I keep it in my stash all the time and then I'm just uh, I wound a couple pieces together there with some twine and I just glued it on kind of at an angle there I did make a little twine bow for the little tag there but I just think this turns out so cute I love all the different elements to it I love the look of the rustic barn wood with that gothic window and the greenery I just think this all pulls together really beautifully do you guys like this one I picked up this darling little birdcage and pedestal and apparently some glass beads at a recent yard sale that I went to and I got a whole box of stuff for just a few dollars and I was so excited about this birdcage because I loved the look of it and the structure of it but I just did not the color was not doing it for me and that's what's so fun about thrifting is and yard sales is you get to find these structural pieces that you think oh if this was just a different color I would love this because things like that are so easy to change now I'm taking a wax candle and I am just putting it in the areas you can see on this piece there's some distressed areas already that's how it naturally came from wherever this was originally purchased and I don't want that green color to show but I really wanted to have some of that brown distressed areas pop through so I'm just very heavily taking this wax candle and rubbing it on there because I wanted to make sure that that was the areas that when I distress this or I'll show you what I do here in just a minute that those are the areas that pop and that come out not the green so I took this out to my studio and spray painted it. You guys have seen me spray paint a million times, so I didn't feel like I needed to bore you with that footage. But what I'm doing now, and I did just use a matte spray paint, but any kind would work. I'm taking my heat tool. I had a viewer tell me to try this with this wax method, and I really did like it. It turns out really well. I just hold my heat gun until it heats that wax up underneath the paint and it starts to melt, and then you're able to wipe away the paint, and then it will thus show that little distressed base there the where the brown was not the green because I didn't put any of that wax where the green was because I didn't want that popping through there might be a little bit of this green that comes through on one or two of these little areas but you can't really tell and you can always go in and touch it up with some paint if you really don't like it but it was such a fun process to try I've recently tried this wax method on another piece that I did recently in a video and it worked so well so I was very happy for this tip of using my heat tool to heat that up and you can see I just hold it there to melt it just be careful not to burn yourself obviously um, and you can see I just hold it there and then it just wipes right off I mean it was so simple and easy and I really did like the contrast this birdcage ends up being so beautiful and I can think of so many different ways that I can use this in decor in my home so I'm quite excited about it now I just did the same thing on this top part of the birdcage it's a little takes a little bit of time to do this but it ends up being so pretty and you can also if you're if you don't want to use the wax or use a heat tool you still can just rub it off or sand it off or even take like a putty knife and scrape it off so if you don't want to have to use the heat tool that's totally optional it did just make this process a lot easier but I think this birdcage turns out so beautiful and it's one of those uh, pieces that's kind of a staple piece to have that is kind of timeless and I think that it will be beautiful in my decor. Do you guys like this one? This is such a fun and quick little thrift flip here. I found this darling orb here and I do like the yellow color. However, I wanted to match kind of my decor lately and so I did just paint this with some Dixie Belle paint. You can use whatever kind of paint but I'm loving the vintage duck egg color and that's kind of the theme that I'm going for in, with some of my projects today so I wanted them to all match. So I just cover it completely with that paint and let it dry. And then I'm taking my white wax and I'm just going to paint over the entire surface pretty heavily. Let that kind of dry and then I'm just going to take a baby wipe and wipe all of the raised surfaces. So that white wax is just going to stay down in all of the little crevices that are there. Um, and that way you can have the detail of this beautiful design show up. And so it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory as you're watching this of how easy it is and what you do and you can always go back and add some more wax if you wipe too much off you can always go back and add a little bit more of the original paint color lightly but look at how beautiful I love that way that distresses that 
Now to take this one step further, I'm taking a little bit of gold paint. You might be able to use rub and buff on here. I've never actually used that, but I have this gold metallic acrylic paint and I just very lightly put some on a paper towel and then kind of not a whole lot. I mean, just a little bit and I'm rubbing it very lightly over these raised areas. So you have a little bit extra contrast there. I just thought that that would almost give it kind of a brassy look here or like an aged brass, I guess. I just really thought it looked really pretty and it's so fun to see the designs on this little ball pop and kind of come to life with the different colors that you use there. You can kind of see how that ends up looking there, the contrast. Do you guys like this? Is, some, is this something that you guys feel like is easy enough that you guys would like to try this? I think it turns out beautiful and it's kind of a nice little piece just to have to tuck into your decor to add a little bit extra element. I just love it. I picked this basket up when I very first started my channel a few years ago and it's been sitting waiting for the perfect project and I felt like it was time to redo this. So I'm just wiping it off really good and I'm also going to sand the edges because they were a little rough and that way it's not going to be super rough. It'll be a little smooth. I just didn't want to get any slivers or anything to be totally honest with you. I This basket is beautiful, but the color is just not something that I have in my decor, that kind of almost like orangey look tone to it. So I thought I would totally paint this. Now, spray paint might have been a better way to go. I'm not 100% sure. I just kind of started painting it with my chalk paint and I used this a chip brush to do it which a chip brush just has those natural bristles in it there so you may get a bristle or two to come out but it's very good for distressing and adding texture which is definitely what I wanted so I painted the entire thing white it did take a couple of coats it did take a little bit of time and I'm just going to take some painters tape here because I really wanted to add a stripe to it. You guys know I love to add stripes to things and so I thought this basket would be the perfect thing to do that with. So I just taped off a little area, was just kind of eyeballing what would probably look the best. And I'm taking my vintage duck egg from Dixie Belle. But of course, when you're doing your projects, you're gonna be matching your decor. So definitely pick a color that would be, I mean, even just a plain gray, I think would be really pretty and really basic if you wanted to or even like a cashew type color would be really pretty so just a little color but not a lot something to add a little variation but it's very easy on the basket here to kind of go over the areas with that tape there the tape does a really good job as far as being a barrier and I feel like where you have the weave of a basket you've got a little bit of a buffer there in case you did go outside of the lines a little bit that you can see it turns out pretty cute and on the top I couldn't come up with a good way to space my stripes and so in the end this is kind of what I came up with and it did end up looking really good you'll see here but I mean it's not the most even of stripes but I distress it so it looks okay no <laughs> I do to go in and distress it though because I really did want to have that really aged look to this that little bit of like this piece came um, from being around a really long time has lots of stories to tell and so I'm just going over with my fingernail file to really get that rustic look to this. And I even go over the basket part here and you can see where all those, the weave of the basket is. It really does pick up that sanding and adds that really good texture for that um, distressed look. And I take, take my time and go through all the pieces. And on the white pieces, I will even sand those down to reveal some of the original color. And then I just take a baby wipe and wipe the entire thing down because you get a lot of dust and everything. And I even did the handles. You can kind of see I distressed around the edges of the handles. This piece distressed up so nicely. But I think it turns out so beautiful. I feel like this has such a good French country vibe to me. I love it. It looks like it could just be maybe even like an old sewing basket that like your great great grandma maybe had or just some piece. I don't know. I think this turned out so beautiful and I'm excited to use it in my home and I will definitely use this one much more than I will the original color that I came.
I always love to do a good thrift flip and to be able to get to do five of them in a video was so much fun. I had so much fun with this challenge and I think all of these pieces turned out beautifully and I just love the idea of going in and finding something that has been discarded by someone for whatever reason and you're able to bring it home, give it new life, have the stories and the history that that piece has and create more and just keep it and have it be match your decor. I don't know. There's just something so fun and so satisfying about that and turning something into something beautiful like this. Which was your favorite item today in today's video? I would love to know down in the comments. Um, I always love seeing which pieces resonate most with you so definitely take the time and let me know also remember down in my description box is a link to the playlist for today so check that out you'll click that it will take you right over to the playlist you'll get to see everyone else's thrift flips thank you missy for hosting with me and thank you aaron glenn for being our guest host this month you guys i'll see you next time have a great day happy crafting if you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.